Are you seeing signs of overheating, signs of a potential correction in the works? Well, look, when, when you see prices go up the way they've gone up, you have to say, ask yourself, why did this happen? My view is it happened 80 percent because of the extraordinary amount of liquidity in the economy, 20 percent because of fundamentals. I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, we were talking about monetary, modern monetary theory like it was some kooky idea that Bernie Sanders had come up with. And now, let's face it, that's what we have. I mean, with the, with the, just with the, uh, you know, the um, infrastructure plan, you're talking about $5.3 trillion in fiscal expansion money it, when we only have $2.1 trillion lost from last year. So this extraordinary amount of liquidity is what's driving these prices. So we started talking about Florida, but listening, listening to the point you're making there, I mean, housing more broadly, do you believe it's in a bubble? Absolutely. I mean, look, I think we're in an omni bubble. I mean, how long does it last? It depends. How long do you keep the faucet open and this money running? I mean, let's face it, the Fed's balance sheet's grown by 83 percent just since last February. I mean, it's completely insane. So the amount of money that we pumped into the economy has caused, you know, look, the, if you just look at personal income, it's gone up every month since last April in a pandemic because of government handouts. So, of course, there's just so much money in corporate balance sheets and everywhere in people's balance, balance sheets and in their bank accounts that has just driven prices of everything higher. But at some point, this has to stop. Yeah, Jeff, it's Robert. Great to see you. And, of course, you made a huge part of your fortune betting against the housing market right before the last big housing crash. So people should pay attention to what you're seeing in the housing market. As it relates to this migration from high-tax states to Florida, are we overstating that when we talk about the billionaires just this week? Uh, we had uh, one of the Guggenheim guys go down there just down the street from you. There was a $120 million purchase by a hedge funder. Is, are people truly moving from high tax states to Florida at, at a large level, at an unprecedented level? And how far, how long do you think that's going to go on? Well, Robert, look, I mean, I moved here in 2008 and after I did my subprime trade because I was only spending so much time in California and I wanted to save some money on taxes. We thought we'd come here for three or four years, see how we like it. You know, with three young children and being in the real estate development business, I thought this was a great quality of life and I stayed here. But let me tell you something. One of the greatest challenges I've had here is finding great workers. There's a huge human problem. When you live in L.A. or you live in New York or Boston or San Francisco, there's un there are unlimited numbers and amounts of qualified people who you can hire to build your businesses. It's a big problem here in Florida, and I think that some of these, some of these new, uh, new, new tech people moving are going to find that. If you're building a tech company, the no number one thing you need is the very best people to build that business. Are you going to find them in West Palm Beach or Sarasota or Miami? Not the kind of people you'll find in Boston or in the Silicon Valley. Let me let me then take that thought, Jeff, a, a little bit farther and and ask you whether you think that trend, and it really was implied in, in Robert's question as well, that trend could reverse. And in two years from now, we see some of the folks who have come down to Florida to establish primary residence, uh, have left the New York, Boston, L.A. area. Do you see that potentially swinging back? for that very reason you cited, and maybe because Florida just gets too damn crowded. Well, that's one problem. Look, I looked this up before I knew I'd go on here, and I'll tell you, my, my parents moved here in 1970. There were 6.7 million people. When I moved here in 2008, there were 18.5 million people. Now there's 22 million people. Florida's always been growing because, you know what, it's a fantastic place to live, especially in your later years if you're not building businesses you're slowing down a little bit and you're playing more tennis and golf and you want to just raise a family and you're in a business that where you can you can make a living here. The idea that you're going to suddenly have these fast growing industries all here, I think, is a bit of a fallacy. So I think that people will come here, but people have always come here. But I don't I think that you're not going to have the huge migration that a lot of people think uh, think is going to happen. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.